HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, local veterans got to check out some upgrades in Army equipment at the Senior Center. Jeff Doherty of Angels Garden Center has some mulching tips, and Ashland Legion Baseball is off and running. But first, the 12th annual Sharon Timlin 5K took place to help in the fight against ALS. Hayden Row Street shut down for a few minutes as over 2,500 participants ran the Sharon Timlin 5K, the race is to help fight ALS, or as some know as Lou Gehrig's disease. The fund was set up in honor of Sharon Timlin, mother of former Red Sox pitcher Mike Timlin, who suffered from ALS. Well, we're lucky again. We have another beautiful sunshine day. Um, out of 12 years, I think we've only had one rainy day. So everybody comes out, everybody has a good time, a little sweat, a lot of laughter. And uh, for this year, my son actually beat me in this race for the first time. Uh, I did, yeah. But a lot of fun getting everybody out here running. Yeah, we really appreciate everybody that comes out, especially all the volunteers that put all this together. We just kind of basically show up and uh, uh, put a little face on, but you know, the whole face is every face you see on a, every poster. They're the inspiration and in why we do this, and we're trying to find a, a, a cure for this. I mean, you'll look around the rest of the day, there'll be hours, there'll still be people standing out here enjoying the fact that they can be out here. And it's Father's Day weekend, so if you turn it into a family event, which is what the volunteers have done for us here, it's just a great way to spend a Saturday for sure. Very true. This is this is a, it's a great event, and it's it's all about families of people that have been stricken with ALS, and you know it kind of supports what they've done to help their their own patients and family members try to get over this. And this is just something we can raise money to do. It's great. All right, now how was your run this year? It was good. I got to run with a good friend I haven't got to run with in a few years. Um, I enjoy this course. It's a good course. And it's covered with volunteers, and to see the little kids running, and running fast. I don't know if I'm just getting that much slower. Maybe that's it. But either way, <laughs> I love being out here. It's so fun. Uh, I don't run. Have you seen this body? I, I don't run. I don't run. That's not so. true. <laughs> uh, we are here because our daughter-in-law, Lauren Hayes Connolly, and her husband are running in it, and our whole family is here. In fact, is our son from California is here, and um, it's really nice to see all these people out here to support this cause. Because, needless to say, it's rather personal for us. It is a gorgeous day. In fact, it's, it's a little chilly for some of us. Um, but they have all kinds of things here. The fact is our grandchildren are getting ready to run in the kids marathon. I should call it a road race. It certainly is a marathon for them. <laughs> How many times have you been to the Sharon Timlin race? This is the first time we have come. We've gone to other events. Uh, but as I said, this is the first time. This happened to be our 45th wedding anniversary today. Congratulations! Thank you. And where are you yeah. from? We're from Natick. Natick, oh 
know, so yeah. right down the road. You're so right. we expect to see you come back next year then. Well, hopefully we'll be back next year. For more information about the Sharon Timlin 5K and Family Fun Day, and to learn more on how you can help fight ALS, visit SharonTimlinRace.org. The 5K seems to grow every year. Be sure to check out SharonTimlinRace.org for more information on how you can help. Every first Friday of the month, local veterans reunite and have breakfast at the Senior Center. After the breakfast this past June, the veterans got an inside look at some upgrades to Army gear being made at the Natick Soldier Research and Engineering Center. Well, to the soldiers ahead, we kind of inhibited their ability uh, to do different things on the battlefield. And once they were wearing body armor, uh, we found out in a lot of cases, when they were in the prone position with their rifle, they could not lift their head up high enough to look through the sights on the rifle because the back of the helmet hit the, the collar of the body armor. So we redesigned the helmet, we made it a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, it provides a little less protection, uh, but it's made out of the same Kevlar bullet resistant material. Okay, what I talked about was some of the work that we do at the U.S. Army Natick Soldier Research Development and Engineering Center, uh, known as the uh, Natick Army Labs, and I talked about the evolution of camouflage and also the evolution of personal protective equipment uh, like body armor and helmets. Uh, so we could show uh, the veterans that were here uh, from different eras, uh, remind them of the, the equipment and the uniforms that they might have worn, and then showed how those changed over the last 50 or 60 years uh, to evolve into what we have now, uh, which is the stuff that is uh, being issued to our soldiers in Afghanistan and the, some of the work that we're going to be doing on, uh, for technological developments for future uniforms and equipment. And we also added, and this best didn't have it, uh, side plates. And what we found in Afghanistan, uh, and in some degree to Iraq, uh, in Iraq, was that soldiers were uh, getting shot here on the side. Uh, and so, you know, they were protected on the front and the back, but if they took, uh, you know, an AK-47 round, to the side, then they were still getting that kind of catastrophic injury uh, to their vital organs. So we added these side plates. We test uh, equipment constantly. Uh, we do a lot of different work at, uh, at the U.S. Army Natick Labs and my organization, NSRDEC. Uh, we not only do uniforms, boots, body armor, helmets, eye protection, uh, and all of that soldier individual equipment and personal protective, uh, equipment related stuff but we also do load carriage which is backpacks uh, we do personnel and cargo parachute systems we do all the armies and actually all the services combat rations through the Department of Defense combat feeding program uh, we also do all shelters uh, so rigid wall and soft wall shelters and tents so we do a lot of different work there that impacts the soldiers life every day and it's a continuous product improvement process in a lot of cases uh, as we come up with new technological developments and we figure out how we can incorporate those into new equipment for soldiers. But it's basically like your computer screen. It's, it's set up so that it has pixels in it, like your flat screen digital TV or your computer screen or your phone. And uh, there's a sensor in the front and it protects against directed energy, which is laser beam type stuff. So there's a lot of lasers on the battlefield. They're not necessarily weapons and they're not necessarily used to degrade your visibility or hurt your eyes, but they can because they're lasers. Uh, and so what these glasses do is they figure out the point of impact of where the laser spot is and it pixelates that area and makes it dark to prevent the laser rays from getting into your eyes. And if you move, then the pixelated dot moves so it continues to protect against wherever that beam is. Uh, we do get feedback and we actively solicit feedback, uh, feedback from our soldiers, uh, not only in the field uh, training, but also uh, the soldiers that are deployed. And we get a lot of our uh, best feedback from soldiers who are in a combat theater of operations. But we also uh, like to talk to civilians 
Uh, and it's always interesting to get the input of veterans, uh, especially guys who have served in the military uh, in World War II or Korea or Vietnam, uh, because some things change and some things don't. And, uh, you know, we consider service members to be always service me members, whether they're still serving or not. Uh, and so we value their opinions and we and value their experience. You can see pictures from the presentation at seenandhopkington.org. Ashland Legion baseball season has started. This year, Hillers dominate the team with nine players overall. After last year, the team lost a lot, but the young players are certainly getting some good experience. Here are the highlights from week one of the season. Ashland Legion baseball got underway this past week. After starting off with a comeback 9-8 win on the road against Tingsboro, Ashland hit the home field against Medford. Top of the second, Medford already up 2-0. They added four more. From the stretch. And this is hit in the air to right field. That'll drop in for a hit. Runner being waved around, and that is going to be the third Medford run, an RBI single for White. And this is hit in the air to center field, drops down into shallow center field. One run is around a score as White comes around for the fourth run. Baller delivers, and this is tattooed into right field towards the fence, drops down another Medford run is going to score, tracking it down is Kime, and everybody safe, 5-0 Medford as Ramassi comes around. For Medford, leg lift and the pitch. This is hit in the air, that'll drop into the glove of the diving left fielder, Jake Obit, a good catch, but runner tagging, throw in is not in time, and it's 6-0. Ashland got a run in the bottom of the third. Stretch. And this is hit in the air. That'll drop into right field, and Ashland is on the board. Six to one. An RBI single by Holler. Medford ended up taking the victory eight to two. Max Perrazzo got the victory, while Greg Holler the loss. For Medford, Dom Ramassi went three for four with two runs and two stolen bases. David Center also went three for four with two runs and an RBI. For Ashland, Michael Krupe went two for three with a triple and a run. The next day, Ashland took on Sudbury. Bottom of the first, Ashland strikes first. Peterson set to deliver. This is hit in the air. A liner in the center. That'll drop. Run being waved around. The throw home is not going to be on target, and it's one to nothing, Ashland. Nick Burns with the RBI base hit. Ends up at second base on the throw in. Two to one, Sudbury leading in the top of the seventh until they added a whole lot of insurance. Leg lift and the pitch. This hit on the ground right side and will get by Krupe. And another Sudbury run is in, three to one. Burns to the set. And this is hit into left center. That drops down for a base hit. And the runner rounding second being waved around third, and he is going to come home, and the throw is going to be off the mark. It's four to one Sudbury, an RBI double by Tom Novick. And the stretch is on the ground right side, and that'll get through for a base hit. Runner being waved around, the throw home is not going to be in time. Five to one on the RBI single. Burns to the set, and this is hit into right center. That drops down, and another Sudbury run is going to come around to score. Sudbury took the game 7-1. Bobby Peterson gets the win, while Nick Burns the loss. For Sudbury, Kieran Pathak went two for three with two runs and two RBIs. Matt Broadbent went two for four with two runs and an RBI. For Ashland, Brendan Wolf was one for three with a run and a stolen base. Ashland then played a third straight home game against Lowell. For the second straight time, Ashland drew first blood in the bottom of the first. Leading off of second, Zabo delivers. This is hit in the air to right center. That'll drop down for a base hit. Runner being waved around. The throw is going to be cut off by the pitcher, and it's 1-0 Ashland. An RBI single for Nick Porter. And the loss to Medford. 
delivery. This is hit in the air towards center field, and it'll drop down. One Ashland run is in, and it's a 2-0 game, an RBI single for Greg Holler. But with the bases loaded on the top of the second, Henry Fanaro did this for Lowell. Oh, bit to the set. And this is hit in the air towards deep center field, towards the wall, and that'll drop in front of Kime. Already one run around to score, another run around to score. That's three runs now, and this is going to be an overthrow past third base, and Fanaro is going to come around to score on the overthrow. It's a four-run play for post 87, and it's four to two. Ashland falls six to four to Lowell and to one and three on the season. Dan Zabo got the win, Jake Obid the loss, Matt Smith the save. Henry Fanaro went one for two with a walk, a run, and four RBIs, which all came on the second inning hit. Mitch Porter was a stud at the plate for Ashland, going three for three with a run. A steel-happy Ashland post-77 was caught stealing four times in this game. Ashland continues the season with a pair of home games next week. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM insider and owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, has some tips about mulching. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. Summer is here, and a lot of you are probably looking for some tips on how to get the yard looking nice. Jeff Doherty of Angels Garden Center recently shared with us some interesting facts to keep in mind when mulching your yard. Hi, my name is Jeff Doherty. I'm from Angels Garden Center, and today I'm going to try and give you a little bit of information on how to mulch. Uh, what to look for when you're buying mulch, and some of the tricks of the trade. Um, mulching has become very popular. The two main reasons why you would mulch would be to keep the moisture in the soil next to the plants and to keep weeds from coming up. And with that known, then the next procedure would be, okay, what color do I pick or what variety do I pick? About 15 or 20 years ago, the craze that started this all was the hemlock tree. And we have a couple of those in the background, um, but they're not visibly uh, present to the camera at this point. But basically, hemlock is a soft wood similar to pine. And on the inside of the bark of the hemlock tree, it has a burgundy red color. That burgundy red color, when it's uh, ground down, has a real nice uh, brown, orangey look to it. And so that's why they call it red hemlock. There are a number of varieties of bark mulch that are natural and some that are artificially colored. The hemlock mix that's behind us right here is a bark mulch that is artificially colored. Um, but one of the things that you need to be aware of is, you know, how much do I get? Everyone always says, gee, I'm not sure how much I'm going to use. If you can measure the square feet of the beds that you're using, you will be able to tell how much mulch you'll need. Behind me in this tractor bucket is a one yard, a one cubic yard bucket. One cubic yard at three inches will cover 110 square feet or a 10 by 11 area. 
With that in mind, you could go through and kind of measure off the bed on, on either side of your house, and that's going to tell you if you have a five foot deep bed that's 30 feet wide, then that's 150 square feet. If you have two of those, that's 300 square feet. But based on that formula that we know about, if you had 300 square feet that you'd have to cover, then you'd need approximately three cubic yards. This one cubic yard bucket that I have with the mulch in it, I always recommend to people that they use a pitchfork. You can use a snow shovel. I see that done a lot. I think it's just because it's available. But if the benefit to the pitchfork is that you can pick up a big scoop of bark mulch and you can sift it and get it to the right thickness that you want. You wouldn't think that a pitchfork would hold that much, but when you start to shake it out and get that sifted out on the ground, you get a nice even covering of that bark mulch. And I've laid down my tape measure to measure 10 feet, and basically I'm going to go down and put enough mulch down so that I can do about a foot wide and 10 feet long until I get to the very end that I'll be able to use that bucket in 110 square feet. Knowing that, now we can estimate what we're going to need to use in our yard. If you have a circular pattern around a tree, Basically, if that tree is three feet wide, then you're going to use that formula that you learned in school about pi. So three feet times 3.14, and you know the rest. So that's about nine square feet. If we know how much we're going to need, then we'll be able to estimate that, and we'll be able to call the different places that carry mulch and give them a rough idea of how much mulch we're going to need in cubic yards. And that's generally how that's done. If you end up going to the store um, to buy bag mulch because you want to save a little bit of money or you want to be able to take the bags, cut them open, and just do certain small areas, that's fine. But be aware that a bag of mulch, whether it's two cubic feet, or three cubic feet, even if it sounds like it's a low price of $3.99 or $4.99, when you multiply that out, a two cubic foot bag, you would need 14 bags to make that one cubic yard. Or if you had a three cubic foot bag, then you would need nine of those to make a cubic yard. And given that formula that you know how many bags or how many cubic feet is in a bag, you could be paying up to $50 for a cubic yard of mulch. All the mulches that are around me run anywhere from $34, $35 a yard up to $40 a yard. So if you realize that a bag is $5 and you're going to need nine of them, well, now you're already over the bulk rate. So do the math, do the homework ahead of time so that you can save yourself the money in the end. Because lugging nine bags or 18 bags in your car and finding out that you paid more than what you could have had it delivered for, you could end up saving yourself some money. Thank you very much, and I hope this has been a helpful segment for you. It is a busy summer so far on HCAM, and a lot of programming is coming up on our stations. Here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to tell you all about it with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. As summer kicks off, it's time again for Ashland Legion Baseball. And on Saturday, July 4th, starting at 1.30 p.m., we have Baseball vs. Medford. Then at 3 p.m., the Baseball vs. Sudbury game will air. Following that, at 4.30 p.m., it's Baseball vs. Lowell. On a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, on Monday, July 6th at 7 p.m., Sherry Stepikoff shares original poetry inspired by her life. 
with all the introspection, reflection, detection of flaws and faults for correction, I am headed in a new direction where I am loved even when I attain less than perfection. At 8.30 p.m., physicians discuss whether gun safety should be considered a public health issue and what role healthcare and physicians should have in advocacy on physician focus. One thing we know, for example, is that children are safer in a home without guns. And if there is a gun at the home, children are safer if the gun is kept locked and unloaded with the ammunition locked separately. On Wednesday, July 8th at 8 p.m., Denise Coffrin discusses some of the services she provides and the programs the library offers to children on All About Hopkinton. What the children can do is that they can come in and read to Gracie. Gracie is a, a service dog who's going to come. And, you know, you can practice your reading. Gracie, does, he just sits there and loves listening. On Sunday, July 12th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 6th will air. Would you like to have the HCAM Insider Newsletter delivered straight to your inbox? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. And if you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and have a great Independence Day.